just to show you something new about the Shed of Serenity, otherwise known as the TARDIS, that I've got this little gap between our wall going over to the neighbours and um, it's like a little alley. So I decided to give this uh, an address because we have a name for the shed, but we don't have uh, an address. So from now on, it's 221B Baker Street. <laughs> Good morning, YouTube, YTPC. How are you all doing? I'm back in the uh, Shed of Serenity here, and it has a new address, as you've seen. <laughs> it was my bit of fun putting that sign on, on the old shed. I wonder if a, a letter was sent here to that address, whether it would arrive at the shed. I don't know. <laughs> smoking an EJ Carey pipe just before they went bust in the UK. They were selling these off for, I don't know, 25 quid or something. And I got one, nine millimeter. Lovely red stain on it and quite nice large bowl as well. You may notice that the angle of the camera is a bit different to past uh, Shed of Serenity videos. I got a new stand, searched actually uh, all on the websites and I found one that was very cheap and allowed you to angle the, the iPad camera 360 in any direction on a tripod so I got that and it's just perfect. So I can actually get the glow of the fire and still sit here comfortably. I will have to get a new pad at some point because I have to use the mic on the iPad. It's the only one that works. Uh, everything I plug in gets crackly and um, I think the socket is, uh, you know, find these iPads, you know, two or three years and usually you crack the glass and something's not working. Uh, but at the moment, if I turn it up to full volume when I do the editing, it still works, you can still hear me. But um, as I've got some much better microphones, uh, I will at some point treat myself to a new iPad, but I spent uh, uh, a moderate amount on gifts to myself uh, over Christmas. As you will see in this video, um, two new pipes added to my small collection of very big pipes. and. Um, got another one on the way. Anyway, cut to the chase. Here's a little videoette that I've uh, made earlier to show you those uh, very large pipes. <laughs> well, here are the Magnificent Three, my currently largest three pipes and uh, one of them you've met already this is uh, this Machiavelli Gorgo model it's actually called a uh, Gorgo uh, on the uh, you can just see it here Gorgo lovely name and these are all nine millimeter pipes and I've got uh, one or two additions here to see on the table. They came over Christmas. Um, let me introduce you to Goliath. That's written here. And you can 
Just about see it, I think, if it will focus. Goliath, Shakom. And it's got a huge bowl. I'll come to the dimensions. Beautiful pipe. And lastly, top left, is a Swiss pipe from Andreas Witchy. I've got three pipes from him. This is the fourth, and he does beautiful pipes. Um, you may want to just check what he has. He has um, some pipes on Ricardo, which is a kind of uh, Swiss eBay, and um, mostly just selling in Switzerland, but uh, uh, I'm sure he uh, would respond if somebody was saying they would like one of his pipes. Um, always about the same price, 150 Swiss francs, maybe that's $160 or something like that, but they're always perfectly drilled. And this one doesn't have a name, so I've given it a name and I've called it Behemoth, <laughs> a biblical sea monster name. I'll leave a link below where it is in the Bible. And he's signed it there, Witchy, which is what he always does. And it is huge. It is actually overall the winner of this big pipe competition. Just to give you an idea, normally you're kind of happy if your thumb knuckle disappears. In this one, your entire thumb goes, you know. So that's like a two hour smoke probably, or a special tobacco that needs a big pipe. Some tobaccos just uh, require that from their nature. And uh, the dimensions, so Machiavelli, this is in centimeters. So I uh, hope you forgive me there, but uh, divide by 2.5 and you, roughly get the inches, but uh, it's uh, the Gorgo here is 16.5 centimeters long. The outside of the bowl is four and a half centimeters and the height is seven centimeters. Now, most of you look at the inside dimensions, the depth of the chamber and the width of the chamber, the diameter and usually that's 2.0 on a standard pipe somewhere around there if it's 2.3 or something's getting to be a large pipe this is 2.5 centimeters across the diameter of the bowl here and the depth and that's often what happens when you get a bigger pipe it may have a large diameter but then it's not so deep this is uh, 5.8 centimetres, 58 millimetres. Most pipes are usually 35 to 45, you know. So you see what we're dealing with here. Uh, little Goliath here, which is maybe overall the smallest one, 14.5 centimetres length. The outside is about as the same width of the outside bowl, 4.5 centimeters, and it's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit shorter, I think that's pretty clear. So 5.2 centimeters, and uh, the width of the bowl is 2.3 centimeters and 4.8 centimeters deep. So it's the smallest of this group, but that is still a very big pipe. You know, that's still way above average to have that kind of uh, chamber. Also has a nice grain. The other two, of course, are rustically finished and it's uh, flattened here that you could 
set it and it's got a lovely kind of red stain beautiful beautiful pipe Chacon make uh, wonderful pipes they really do hand cut that's right beautiful goliath and last but by far not least at all <laughs> is the witchy pipe which has 19.8 centimeters length it's the outside is uh, 4.5 centimeters like the machiavelli 6.8 centimeters in height it's not quite you know that's getting to be almost arguable It depends the point you almost measure on, uh, you know, avoiding those dips. It might be actually at least and slightly taller than the um, Gorgo Machiavelli. So I'll probably correct that and say that's the same. And on the inside bowl, it's 2.6 centimetres across, so it wins the chamber competition. It's about the same depth as the Gorgo Machiavelli uh, on the chamber, but as the, the bowl and the chamber is maybe the most important feature, and it wins on the length. Um, Behemoth is the winner of this little competition. Um, I do have a very large pipe coming from Chris, uh, BJB Pipes, which you've seen from his video. And he says it's one of the biggest ones he's made. And that will get into uh, this class of uh, super large pipes <laughs> that I've got. And I'm um, really looking forward. I've smoked the uh, Gorgo already and it smokes really well. And uh, I'm going to try these two in the next uh, two or three months or even two or three weeks perhaps <laughs> to try them out. But really beautiful, beautiful big pipes. I love them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. They are part of the pride of my collection, those, those big pipes. And uh, if you want a really long smoke or, you know, certain tobaccos, it's better in a big pipe. Had a visitor the other day. My wife brought her, one of her girlfriends and uh, she was kind of curious about, uh, you know, the whole hobby and wanted to have a look so i i showed it to her and she says that's enormous sorry i just couldn't resist that silly joke you know but no more silly jokes you know uh, today actually i'm smoking in my carry pipe some wilkie Churchill, you remember I got that about a year ago and I did some reviews of uh, fantastic Wilkie tobaccos, they are brilliant and if I had room I'd get even more of their collection but I've got so much tobacco um, and this Churchill one is really nice if you like a, a smoky sweetness, you know it's not super powered um, it's cigar leaf, so, you know, it's not quite like a lot of Latakia, but it's uh, very, very pleasant and uh, absolutely one of my favorite Wilkie tobacco. The other one is the 515 from Basil Rathbone um, with that rum topping that's a, a fantastic Wilkie tobacco, but they have so many that are really excellent. So do check out Wilkie tobacconists in, if you're in the States. You don't have all the 
big shipping than I would have if I order some, so well worth looking at. Did some jarring up yesterday, so my Carter Hall tub has been emptied into jars, and now it's a decoration. Because I realise I can't leave too many tubs for, for too long and the tendency is to forget about them and then of course after three or four years uh, everything even in those sealed tubs they, they get can get dry. I know this particular one from Carter Hall they say it's good for three years because it's uh, some sort of high density plastic. Um, but just to be on the safe side, I jarred it all up. And I'm progressively looking at, uh, especially tubs that are that sort of uh, metalized uh, cardboard um, construction. Uh, the ones that are in the uh, good old aluminium tins from C and D and so forth, you're fine with those when they're sealed up when you buy them. Um, but even these ones, any ones that I've opened, I've uh, basically jarred jarred the contents up when, once I popped the tin. You know, I had a few tricks putting uh, silver foil on the inside of the lid and then with parafilm or with uh, plumber's Teflon tape uh, seamed up. That works for, uh, you know, let's say a few weeks, a month maybe, but again, the danger is you forget about them and go back to them after six months and they, or a year, and then they've really dried out. So the shame is about these aluminium tins, it's actually right that C&D use that because they're light and um, they do a fine job, but the problem is my magnets can't can't uh, attach them to the metal structures in this shed. So I, uh, it's not like the other tins I've got where I've got this nice uh, decoration everywhere, but I can stack them in corners and still remember how it was when I smoked, uh, you know, scarecrow. It was about a third of a tin left you know, put it in a small jar and, you yeah. know, that way nothing will go to waste and I always find after rehydrating, you, uh, you, can, you can get it pretty good, you can get it back to about 90% of what the taste was when it was perfect and fresh, but uh, sometimes, depending on the back tobacco, the rehydration doesn't quite get it to where it was, you know, some of those volatile flavours have gone and uh, never to be retrieved again just with putting the moisture back in, so um, I try to avoid that they dry out at all if I can. My lighter today is a clipper Geisha uh, lighter, rechargeable, um, refillable. She's got a, a gas mask on, I don't know why. But the clippers, I know a lot of YTPC or some of you really swear on these and they are very good lighters, you know, and not so expensive. Yeah. Just playing a bit of radio chilling out my shed. Uh, outside it uh, did frost quite heavily in the night and I've got it up to about 10 or 12 degrees with my little heater here. It does slowly, I usually put it on an hour before I come here just to kind of warm it up, you know, otherwise it takes quite a while to warm the shed up again. Anyway, not to make it too long, just wanted to show you those uh, extra size pipes and uh, 
re-establishing myself in the shed of serenity. You'll take care out there. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye.